Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and today we're checking out the brand new update to Audio Modern's Riffer. It is now on version three and it's coming with a bunch of really great additional features. So let's go ahead and check it out. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and reset it up inside of Ableton Live. I'm gonna drop Riffer onto its own channel here and it's a MIDI channel and then I have my synth or whatever I want Riffer to trigger on a second MIDI track. And then I'm gonna come into input here inside of Ableton Live, choose Riffer on that top one, Riffer on that bottom one, arm that channel, hit this button to randomize some MIDI. And we're getting Riffer to trigger that. Now Riffer is an idea generator, essentially. It generates MIDI melodies for you at the click of a button. And you have a bunch of control over the randomization process and the probability of events happening and not happening and ranges and so forth. And we're going to get into all of that, but that's essentially what it is. So for example, I want to choose my key from C minor to G, although you do have all of these other scales to choose from. And I'm going to hit this button again. And whatever range is shown here, on the screen is where the MIDI will be generated. So it's just a visual representation of the possible squares, for example, to be put in there. If I add more steps here and then hit this button, it will generate again, okay? So that's the idea here, as, as well as the range of keys, if I pull it up and you'll see that it's generated over that entire range. So let's come back into something a little bit more manageable just for this tutorial. I just wanted to point out that that's how it works here. So C3 to C4, randomize. I can also change how many notes are gonna get triggered. So let's go from 16 to eight. Again, hit the random button. So I've already got a really decent melody for this synth. That's how easy it is. And that's the idea of Riffer. However, with version three, you got a lot more controls. And with more controls, one of the big new features is the ability to trigger these things with your MIDI keyboard. So if you're looking to randomize, or if you're looking to switch keys, or if you're looking to use uh, add or take away any of these new lanes, which we're gonna talk about, you can do that all with your MIDI keyboard by using the MIDI learn function. Unfortunately, I don't have a MIDI keyboard set up, but that is a possibility. Now, another new thing about Riffer 3 is the density control down here. And it works the same way as the velocity and the duration and the pitch. If I come in here, I can use the sliders manually to add density to any note. So I'm gonna turn these all off for a second. And you can see right here, I've got a note happening. If I come up here and add it up to eight, it's going to repeat that note eight times during that period. Pull it down to four, or down to two. So every time I hit the random button, it's going to choose some of those columns at random and add a value at random. However, I do have control over the density range. If I come over here and bring it down to two, and then hit random, it's never gonna go above two, it's gonna between one hit or two hits. Or if I come in here and manually make some decisions, like for example, I know that I'll never really want a roll to happen unless it's towards the end. If I make a change here and I want it to always be there no matter what, never randomize again, not use the range, not use any randomization feature, while it's selected here, I can hit the lock button. And now no matter how many times I change the pattern, this one will always only be the only one that rolls two times. And that works the same way with velocity, okay? And duration and pitch, perfect. So that's the other new feature, which is very, very powerful. Next, what I wanna do is move on to R2. And again, let's we can change up the key if we want, but let's keep it in the same key as R1. I'm gonna do G minor. Let's come in here and instead of 16, let's put in four. And what I wanna do now is turn on root note. With root note turned on, it's only going to make the effects happen on the root note. So if I hit random here, you'll see that this is where the trigger is going to happen, and it's only going to be on the root note. But for R2, let's drop it down an octave and have it be sort of the base of the, the sequence we're making here. So I'm going to hit random again, and let's listen to what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I'm making a baseline here. So what I wanna do is come into density and I wanna bring it down and I wanna lock it down so I don't have any rolls. I'm not looking for any rolls on R2. And then I also wanna turn on sustain. So it will sustain those bits over there. And maybe we can turn on tie too. And you can see here, if I come back into pitch, what's happening, you can actually see it visually. Sustain just means it's going to hold those notes a little bit longer. And tie, if they're randomly generated next to each other, it will tie them together as if it's one long held note. All right, isn't that sweet? So we can keep doing that until we find one that we like. Let me see what happens if I drop it down a full octave uh, below that one. So that one actually sounds better. Let's leave it there and let's move on to R3. Now what I wanna do for R3 is add a little bit of kind of almost like a solo on the higher pitch. So instead of on zero, I wanna go up 12 this time. So up an octave, I'm gonna jump over here again to C, uh, G minor. And what I'm gonna do is actually come in here to, well, let's leave it there now and see what happens. I'm gonna come in here and make this three. Let's generate some MIDI. Uh, I got to turn off root note. Now, these this particular synth patch at the higher pitches it's actually being much louder. What I can do is come into velocity and change my range to something a little bit quieter because I just essentially want these to be accents. Is that not sweet? So now that I have something that sounds pretty good, what I wanna do is actually activate this infinity button and I'm gonna put it up to two. Now what this does is on whatever R you have, whatever uh, sequence you have selected, and if I jump over here, you'll see that it's not turned on for this. So all of the settings are, essentially you've got four pages here. Each one of these, all of the settings are dedicated to whatever page you have selected. What this infinity button does is every two bars, it's essentially going to hit the randomize button for me automatically. And this is great if you're in a live setting and you just want things to be constantly evolving, or if you're just looking for the right idea. When you hear the right idea, you stop it and you save the preset. So let's go ahead and listen to what this sounds like. And by the way, the preset button's down here. And if I just click this, I'll save whatever I have. So if I'm doing uh, this for finding the right melody or sequence, once I find it, I just go ahead and hit this and it will automatically save it in my bank of presets. But let's go ahead and just listen to uh, what this does. And you know, those first three sounded really great with the rest of what I had going on. Now it doesn't stop there. I can easily be like, you know, maybe this one isn't right for me. Maybe I can come back in here and hit this again. Or maybe velocity is still a little bit high for this. Maybe I bring it down a little bit. Or maybe it's time to go minor or major. Let's come into major and change it to F major. Come in here and do the same thing. Major, F, major, F. I mean, it's just so impressive how easy it is to really begin to sculpt the probability of different things happening and ranges and so forth. And you can really start to build out the guidelines for Riffer to make incredible sequences for you. 
All right, so there you go. Some of the new features inside of Riffer 3 include the density control, include the four different pages that you can have running, or polyphonic mode, essentially, and the MIDI learn function. You can also share presets between the iOS app and, the, and your VST and so forth. Lots of great new features, a really powerful plugin. It's been powerful since version one, and now it's even more powerful. So I highly suggest checking it out. As always, links are in the video description if you do. I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.